Hey YouTube, I'm Patrick from the Babylon JS team. Welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about morph targets and how we can access them from your GLTF files. So let me dive right into that. Uh, you've seen this before, uh, obviously. This is one of our launch demo assets uh, from our 4.2 release. And what I want to do is uh, use this as a, an example of morph targets. And let me explain what morph targets are just in case you're not familiar with them. Uh, so morph target is uh, a connection between two meshes that are identical. Usually what we do is we start with a mesh, <clears throat> make, an ex make a copy of the mesh, and then change the positions of all the vertices so that we have two different positions for each vertex. Uh, and then we take both meshes and we connect them through what's called a morph target. And that morph target gives us an influence slider that allows us to interpolate between the positions, the start position and the end position for each vertex. Uh, and what that can do is that can change the shape of the mesh all at once. Um, so uh, if I activate this axe here, uh, you can see we are morphing between two states of the mesh. The first one is uh, small and uh, uh, within the blade of the axe. And the second one is the final position of the ice so that uh, we see this ice grow on the axe. So basically we're using a a, a vertex level animation, which is very powerful. And so uh, what we want to do is we want to show you how to access that that morph target information from your GLTF file. Uh, so when you load it into Babylon, you have access to something like that. Uh, I don't want to do it on this asset because this asset is very complicated. Uh, so what I did is I created a very simple asset that we can practice with. Uh, so this is just a very simple motion graphic loader that we might use on a on, on anything that uh, we need to use a custom loader for. Um, so what I have here is just a very simple uh, Maya file that we exported to GLTF, and it has three cubes in it. Each cube has a morph target on it, and then uh, we also have some animation. Um, so. What I want to do is first let's look at the mesh. Um, and when you load in a GLTF mesh that has a morph target on it, um, you will see that uh, we have access to the morph target right away. And so if I take uh, the uh, center uh, cube here, which is this one right here, and then grab this slider and move it, you'll see what, what's actually happening is we're morphing between these two states of the mesh. Uh, the initial state being the cube and then the finish state being this diamond. Um, so each one of the, the meshes has the same morph target on it. And we also have uh, an animation group that we loaded in from our GLTF. And if I click on the animation group, uh, you'll see I can hit play and this plays the animation that was authored in Maya for us. Um, so you can tell that we don't have anything going on with the morph target right now because we want to animate that in code. Um, I do have a custom node material on this uh, this asset. And what I have to do is, um, if we're going to use morph targets and uh, node material, we actually have to set up the node material to access the morph target. So let me go into that really quickly before we jump into the code. Um, I'm going to grab my morph target, or um, uh, excuse me, my node material, and let's open up the node material editor. And uh, we'll drop it here on the screen, give us a little bit more space. Um, and you can see it's not a very complicated shader. Um, you know, we have our standard vertex information. Um, we're doing a dot product on the surface so that we can get uh, an output that we're uh, running through a gradient. And that's how we're creating the, the color in the asset. Um, so super simple. But the important part here is that we have this, uh, this morph target node. And what we're using with the morph target node is, you know, mesh position, mesh normal, mesh tangents, and mesh UVs. And then that actually is pumped into the world position rather than using uh, mesh position. And it's also pumped into the world normal instead of using uh, mesh normal. And the reason being is that uh, this will look at the morph target and change all of the uh, vertex positions and the vertex normals based on the two uh, morphs that we're uh, using. So uh, it's very important that uh, for node material that we use the morph target node so that we can set it all up correctly. Uh, so now once we got that going, uh, we're all set and ready to go uh, to access our morph target. So uh, let me jump into the code here. And uh, what I've got here is um, I, at the top here, I have a custom uh, animation function. Um, and we're setting up our scene, uh, our camera, uh, 
I, I've set it up as an orthographic uh, view on the camera. So we're doing a little bit of resizing of the height and width based on um, if the if the the screen size changes. For example, um, if I uh, if I pull this out, we're actually changing the screen size, and so we're re recalculating the orthographic projection uh, every frame. Um, the other part of it is we're loading our node material uh, from the node material we just showed. And um, we're loading our asset next. Uh, we have to build our load, our node material. And then the next part is the, uh, the important part for morph targets. So uh, what we're doing is we're going through each mesh uh, in the scene, uh, grabbing each one by name. Um, we set up an array for our mesh influences. And then uh, we iterate through each mesh and go and grab uh, the morph target manager. Now, you saw that there is only one morph target on the mesh, and so we know the morph target manager is going to store in their uh, morph target influence at array zero that only uh, morph target that's on the mesh. And so we know we can grab uh, the the first morph target influence just by saying get target zero. Um, if there were more than one, you would have to figure out uh, which one you need and grab uh, the appropriate morph target. Um, and then uh, you can attach that to animation. Uh, so then this next part is I'm just setting up animation keys so that we have the correct values. Um, and what we want to do is we want to time the morph target animation uh, with the spin animation that's going on here so that um, as the, the mesh jumps and spins, it also morphs. Um, and we want that uh, because it's an indeterminate uh, loading spinner, uh, we want that morph target to move between each of the meshes. Um, and so that gives us a sense of time passing. Um, so the next part of this is um, I'm going to call our custom uh, uh, animation function. And what that what that's doing, let me scroll back up here, is um, we don't want to write this uh, animation code multiple times. So we're just going to iterate through uh, and do it once in a custom function and then call that custom function. So what we're doing is we're animating a specific parameter. Um, the uh, Animation value is um, the the value on the mesh that's changing. In this case, the morph target influence. Um, our animation keys we're passing along from the keys that we defined. Uh, group says if I uh, have an animation group I want to add to, uh, I can do that. And then start basically starts the animation on the group if one is available. And so. Um, you can see here, uh, we grabbed from our uh, GLTF file the group already. So we've already uh, assigned that group to a variable, which we can pass along to this function. Um, and so since we have that, uh, basically we're going to create an animation. We're going to give it uh, our animation keys. And then if the group is assigned, uh, if it's not null, then we will add that animation to that group. And then uh, if we call start, then we will start playing on the animation. And you can see uh, down here, our first two uh, calls of that function uh, set false so that we're not starting the animation until the third one is done and loaded. And what's important there is that for animations, if we want to time them and keep them together, uh, we want to say uh, play or stop on the group, and then it starts or stops all of the animations in that group. Uh, if we didn't have them as groups, then we would have to call start and stop on each individual animation. And the problem you can get into there is uh, if you have one of them start or stop without the others, uh, then you can get a, a state uh, conflict where the animations are no longer in sequence. So adding them all to the initial group that was created in Maya uh, means that we can just call start and stop on the group and then all the animations will always stay in sync. So it's very important to do um, and, and it's very easy to do as well. So. Um, to see what we've got here, uh, let me go ahead and uncomment these three lines and then play our scene again. And you'll see right away, we've got the morph target animation playing with the animation uh, from the, the uh, translation and rotation. So um, it's a nice way to uh, corral all of the animations together using groups. Um, we can use the morph target for something like this, which is more of a motion graphic feel. Um, and the, the morph target means that we, we have the power of a vertex level animation without having to create a complex uh, skeletal rig. Um, so it's a very simple thing to do, 
um, it's very powerful. Um, and as you can see, it doesn't take a lot of code to leverage the, the morph target and, and set it into an animation system. So um, I hope that uh, all of this made sense. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments below. Uh, we will put a link to this playground in the description. And uh, we hope you have fun playing with Babylon and create some really awesome things. Hope you have a great day. Take care.